Les films sont plus harmonieux que la vie, Alphonse. Il n'y a pas d'embouteillage dans les films. Il n'y a pas de temps mort. Si on ment un peu, c'est pour être plus vrai. The film is inspired by a true story, and I just wanted to use the, the main nucleus of the story, which is this uh, sentence, this one sentence that a Russian woman lives in New York and walks back to Russia via North America and via the Bering Strait. The real Lillian Elling uh, was doing this in the 1920s, and we don't really know too much about her. We don't know why she did it, and we don't know especially what happened to her. We don't know if she disappeared, or she disappeared. So we don't really know her fate. Um, so that's all that I'm using for my film. And it was never really uh, my, my intention to, um, to reenact the 1920s. You know, I didn't want to make this a period piece because I think it's, um, it works on a very universal level, this story. I think all of us can relate to um, someone just walking away. Um, and also I think uh, for the viewers it's, it's um, better if, if this protagonist is, is, uh, doesn't have the burden of a history, of a back history. So I like the idea that we don't really know anything about her history and we don't really know why she does it. So we focus, we really concentrate on the journey itself. She has no history and she has no motives or the motives I think uh, the viewer uh, creates for her. So for this reason also it was clear to me that uh, she should not talk. Uh, there would be no dialogue. I didn't want to limit myself with the dialogue and then have to execute a script that I wrote. So it's really actually the journey that dictates what happens and what happens to her. And then I think we focus on, it, it, first of all, it, it forces me to focus on different things as a filmmaker. Details become important, her skin, how her skin changes, how her hair grows back. Um, I'm forced to really be more active, I think, as a cameraman, also a camera operator, and as a director, to focus on all kinds of things but not her dialogue. I mean, there is dialogue in the film, but it's not, she doesn't say anything. Um, and I think for the viewers, the same thing is true. It might be uh, um, demanding, but, but I think you start um, looking at different things that are important on her journey. Lillian is the protagonist, and uh, there is the big antagonist that is the North American continent with all its people and locations. So for that reason, it was clear to me that this film would, be, would need to be uh, shot in a very documentary-like way. So we did not have a script, um, and before we started shooting, we did not know where we would be shooting. We didn't know the locations, we did not know where the journey would uh, take us. So we had to improvise a lot, and um, we didn't know the weather. It was clear that we would be sh shooting for um, almost a year. I wanted to f the film to start in the spring and end in the winter, so you have the, uh, the idea of a, of a lifetime or lifespan in, in this film through the change of seasons. Um, and it's, I think it's, um, you know, there are scenes where you need to, uh, where you are allowed to improvise more and there are scenes that you need to prepare a bit. I mean, it, it, it varies. We only worked with people who we met, so everybody's more or less playing him or herself. So when I was doing research, I met the sheriff, but uh, I met him in a town that is called Monowai. And um, the special thing about this town is that there is only one person living in this town. And I wanted to do something with her, but then uh, enters into her bar, but then enters the sheriff, and I was fascinated by this character. So I um, tracked him down, I talked to him, and I asked him how he would um, um, deal with a walker like this, with Lillian. Um, and really everything you see in the film is based on what he told us, so that's actually what he does. And, and in this sense, I think it's very documentary-like and very true. shot in a chronological way that was necessary because uh, our protagonist changes. There is different costumes that she's wearing and she also her physical appearance changes. So we were, f you know, we were not as free as, as we would have been otherwise to, to um, just exchange scenes. Um, there is, like I said, the change of seasons. So we had to, and the, of course the geography. 
Um, but the film was edited in a, in a, also edited in a, in a documentary-like way. So we had, um, I think, more than 200 hours of footage, which is more probably like what you come home with uh, when you are doing a documentary. Um, and it took a long time to edit. And there we had some freedoms. So, for example, in British Columbia, when uh, you know we were shooting the fall, the autumn, um, the landscape doesn't change much in British Columbia, for example. So there we had more freedom to exchange scenes. The more she walks, the more she's really um, um, bringing it down to essential things. So there's also a change, I think, in her femininity. She starts off uh, wearing useless things, makeup, for example, and she loses all of that. She changes in, in age, I think, throughout the film, but also in gender. She, she seems more like boyish uh, towards the end of the film. What was interesting for me was that you get a sense of the, the physicality of the continent and the, how, but also how humans change the continent. So you, the infrastructure changes. Um, the roads become less and uh, the civilization becomes more spare as she walks uh, westwards. There is, you know, films that, um, like, for example, you have a GoPro, a small camera, and you attach it to your windshield and you drive through the continent and then you make a photo every minute or something and then you watch that as a film so you get a um, uh, sped up or speeded up version of, of, of your journey. And uh, I try to do a similar thing maybe in slow motion because she's walking, but uh, in two hours you actually really uh, make this journey from New York to, to Alaska. The film starts with um, uh, a, a... She's trying to get a job uh, with a porn producer and I don't think, I think she does it half-heartedly. She, she is not really, you know, into this and she has never done it before. So I think she's a misfit. She, she's, she's lost. That's, I think, how I would like to portray her. And um, the film starts with these scenes. For me, pornography is, is an extreme form, uh, phenomenon of, of a capitalistic society. Um, but then the film ends at the Russian side of the Bering Strait with indigenous whale hunters. And they um, really you know, hunt a whale uh, and, and bring it to the coast. And then the whole village gathers and comes together. And um, the, the meat of the whale is, is split up between everybody. So everybody goes home with, with a piece of that whale. But there's no exchange of money. So that's the opposite of a capitalistic society. So I, th I thought this would make the contrast even more stark. <laughs> Creation is everything, I guess, you know, for me, you know, it's where it starts. It's where, um, um, like with this film, the, I have been wanting to, to do this for 15 years. Uh, that's when I heard the story for the first time. And so the creation process took a very long time. And, and, but I think I, I managed to come back through a lot of detours, uh, come back to the original nucleus of an idea. That's uh, what I like to try to do with my films. And for me, independence means everything because uh, I like to, I mean, I, I have, I, this is my first fiction film. I did documentaries before. Um, I um, often did them by myself. Um, and, you know, I like to edit by myself, um, also do the music by myself. So I think the, the yeah, independence is for me and for my films a very important factor. Mm -hmm.